Welcome to On The Move. And thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> and welcome to uh, Clark County District Court. I'm Judge Swanger. Thank you for your patience. Are the parties ready to proceed in the case of City of Vancouver versus Mac Worley? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> this is a criminal case brought by the City of Vancouver against the defendant, Mac Worley. Uh, the City Attorney is Mr. Uh, Jacob Randall. Mr. Randall, if you could introduce yourself as well as uh, Officer Rollins. Yes, my name is Jacob Randall. I represent the City of Vancouver. And this is Officer Troy Rollins with the uh, Vancouver Police Department. And Mr. Worley, the defendants represented uh, uh, by Mr. Spencer Freeman and Robert Apgood. If you could uh, <coughs> stand and introduce yourself as well as Mr. Uh, Worley and Mr. Apgood. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, good morning. My name is Spencer Freeman. I'm an attorney. I represent Mac Worley, who is present here. And uh, co counsel on the case is Robert Apgood. Good morning. And Mr. Worley is charged with one count of uh, unlawful display of a weapon. This alleges that in the city of Vancouver, June 29, 2013, uh, he did carry, exhibit, or display a firearm uh, in a manner under circumstances in a time and place that uh, warranted alarm for the safety of other persons. Uh, to this charge, uh, Mr. Worley has uh, entered a plea of not guilty. Keep in mind that a charge is only an accusation. The filing of a charge is not evidence that the charge is true. Your decision as jurors or the six of you who serve on the jury uh, must be made solely upon the evidence that is presented during these proceedings. And again, to the uh, charge of unlawful display of a weapon, uh, the defendant has entered a plea of not guilty. The plea of not guilty means that you, the jury, must decide whether or not the city have, of Vancouver has proved every element of the crime charged. The city has the burden of proving every element of the crime charged beyond a reasonable doubt. The defendant has no burden of proving that a reasonable doubt exists. The defendant has no duty to call witnesses, produce evidence, or to testify. The defendant is presumed innocent. The presumption of innocence continues throughout the entire trial. The presumption means that you must find the defendant not guilty unless you conclude at the end of your deliberations, at the end of the trial, that the evidence has established the defendant's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, towards the end of the trial, well, just by a show of hands, who here has previously been called in for jury duty? Okay. Thank you. Those of you who, who may have actually served on a jury <clears throat> understand that the, towards the end of the trial, the, the uh, court gives jury instructions which uh, outline the uh, uh, procedures that the jury is supposed to follow and define some terms and things such as that. One of the uh, uh, jury instructions that will be given in this case is a reasonable doubt instruction. The third and final uh, paragraph of that instruction <clears throat> defines reasonable doubt. And I'll just give that to you right at this point. A reasonable doubt is one for which a reason exists and may arise from the evidence or lack of evidence. It is such a doubt as would exist in the mind of a reasonable person after fully, fairly, and carefully considering all the evidence. If from such consideration you have an abiding belief in the truth of the charge, then you are satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt. <clears throat> We're at the uh, stage of the trial referred to as jury selection or voir dire. Uh, it's where the... Uh, Myself and the attorneys will be asking a few questions, not to embarrass you, not to pry, not to put you on the spot, uh, not to test your legal knowledge, uh, but to see whether or not you have the frame of mind where you could be a fair and unbiased juror. That doesn't mean that if you're not selected for this trial that somebody thought that you couldn't be fair, or that you were biased, or for whatever reason. Uh, but both sides, both the city and Mr. Worley, are entitled to a, uh, a trial by a uh, fair and impartial jury. It may be that your particular life experiences have brought you too close to this type of case to where you could guarantee that you would remain uh, neutral until you had heard all the evidence and been instructed by the court. The only way to find out if you have that frame of mind is by asking you questions. So again, myself and the attorneys will be asking questions of you. The only difference is I'm going to ask general questions. Like moments ago when I said, who here has been called in for jury duty? Raise your hand. And some of you raised your hand. I'm just going to pretty much get the ball rolling by asking general questions. I'm not going to ask any follow-up questions, such as, oh, did you actually serve on a jury? Was it criminal? Was it civil? Did you, were you the presiding juror? Did, it, did you reach a verdict? Things such as that. I'm not I'm going to be asking those. I'll leave those to the attorney. <clears throat> so at this point, <clears throat> I'm going to ask, uh, place everyone under oath who's been called in, 
not only those of you who are seated in the jury box, but also those of you who are seated on the benches. I place you under oath to answer questions for, for voir dire. So if each of you could please stand and raise your right arm. <clears throat> and you and each of you solemnly swear or affirm that you will truthfully answer any questions that are put to you this morning considering your, uh, concerning your qualifications to serve as jurors. If so, please say yes. 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 Okay, thank you. Please be seated. And so again, I'm going to be asking some questions. Those of you who are seated in the jury box, uh, <clears throat> when when you raise your hand, uh, you don't need. I don't need to ask your name because the attorneys have a seating chart with your name and your cor corresponding uh, seat. <clears throat> Those of you who are on the benches, uh, when you raise your hand, I'll be asking you your last name so that the, uh, the attorneys can make note of it so that they don't have to keep uh, turning around. <clears throat> so, if you would answer yes, maybe, could be, anything other than a definite no to these general questions I'm going to ask, would you please raise your hand? First, have any of you ever heard of this case before? I'm in no way suggesting this case is newsworthy. I ask this in every case. I want to make sure that when you came into the courthouse today, you didn't hear somebody say, oh, I'm here for the, the uh, unlawful display case in Swanger's courtroom or anything like that. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to give you the names of some people who may or may not be involved in the trial. Please raise your hand if you know any of these people. Do, do any of you know Mr. Jacob Randall from the city attorney's office? Do any of you know anyone from the city attorney's office? Does anyone here know Mr. Mac Worley? Spencer Freeman? Robert Apgood? And Vancouver Police Department Officer Troy Rollins, seated at council table. Vancouver Officer Ed Alba. Officer Mark Blaisdell. Officer Brent Donaldson. Officer Monica Hernandez. <clears throat> Dustin O'Brien, these are not police officers. Dustin O'Brien. Christopher Orthmeyer. Oh, Dust, you may know Dustin O'Brien? Go back a couple questions. I work with close with the city. Okay. Actually, I'm going to ask a general question in a few moments if anybody knows anybody with uh, the city. But, that's, but thank you. <clears throat> Sherilyn Poser. Steve Smith. Jose Vasquez. Okay. Again, they may or may not be <clears throat> called as witnesses. If it appears to you that you do know somebody, if you are one of the uh, six people plus the alternate selected for the jury and the person gets called in to testify and you do recognize them, uh, let us know, and we'll take care of that outside the uh, presence of the other jurors and don't discuss it with the, uh, the jury. <clears throat> and by a show of hands, who here has previously been called in for jury duty, whether or not you were actually uh, impaneled or sat in on the jury? If you could raise your hands. And those of you on the benches, uh, your name, please? Young. Young. Name, please? Becky. Becky. Name, please. Um, if I was scheduled, does that count? Did you actually show up like this? Okay, yeah, if it was just scheduled. Name, please. Uh -uh. Okay. Call me in. Okay. Thank you. Again, the attorneys will probably be asking follow up questions. And if you were seated on the uh, uh, the jury panel, they in the jury box, they they were able to, to uh, get your name. Has anyone here ever uh, testified either in court, whether it was a trial like this, traffic ticket, small claims case, had to give a deposition at work or a recorded statement to an insurance agent, anything along those lines? Name, please. Name, please. Dave. Okay. And thank you. Is what? Is family court now? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, thank you. And has anyone here, again, this is uh, not meaning to pry or put anyone on the spot, uh, anyone here, either themselves or a member of their family, uh, been accused of a crime? 
Not convicted, just accused. Thank you. Is anyone here a member of any sort of uh, advocacy group? Mothers Against Drunk Driving, um, traffic groups, uh, the National Rifle Association. Green Inkley? G-R-O-A-G. And Dean. And is anyone here, again, I just ask a few general questions to get the ball rolling. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, the attorneys will ask follow-up with questions with you. The, uh, but thank you. Okay, this is a very broad uh, general, well, is, is there anyone here who owns a fire, either them or a member of their family owns a firearm? Okay, Mr. Grote, Mr. Vecchi. Ms. Kirkpatrick, Ms. Colamine, Ms. Mr. Ding. Name, please? Jones. Jones. Okay. Thank you. Anyone here, either themselves, anyone here who uh, does not own a firearm or has never handled a firearm? Which did you not own or never handled? Either. Either never owned one, never handled one. Or if you handled one, they don't own one. Okay. That'd be a, uh, your name, please? <laughs> And De Stefano. And And oh. was that Ozarunga? Okay. And Mr. Young? So if you've handled one, handled one. Yes. Okay. Question. Yes. Just, just holding one or? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. You should okay. have hired him. Miss Weed. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah, the attorney the attorneys are gonna ask follow up questions. <laughs> oh uh, Mr. Destefano? Yeah, I figured you're confused. I thought you said has has not ever owned or handled a fire. Oh. Yeah, I think that actually was the question. Anybody here that's never, <laughs> yes, never, never, touched, never touched a fire? Never touched a fire. Mr. DeStefano and Dunsire? Never touched a fire. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll retract that. Yeah, I'll retract that. Yeah, I'll retract that. Okay. okay. Thank you. The, Show of hands, anyone here, either themselves or a member of their family, even if it's extended family, in any way related to anyone who is part of our system of justice? In other words, are you or is a do you either you or a member of your family in any way related to any judges, lawyers, police police officers, probation officers, legal secretaries, investigators, Mr. Young, Mr. Ding? Okay. Next question, do you have any acquaintances, do you have any friends, neighbors, associates who are in any way related to our system of justice? Do you know any judges, lawyers, probation officers, police officers, legal secretaries, investigators, MPs in the military? Mr. Young, Mr. Ding, Mr. Colamine, and Jones? Okay, thank you. Okay, last question, I'm going to turn over to the attorneys to give them each uh, blocks of time to ask questions. And I probably presided over 150, 200 jury trials and been part of several hundred since 78. And it was the first time ever, last jury trial, I, did, I neglected to ask this. It, and the, it turned out there was a person whose wife was having emergency gallbladder surgery. Is there anyone who'd be unable to uh, serve on this jury today? We did a few years ago, we had a woman in labor. Okay, so. I'll be in the right now, officer. Huh? Let me see your ID. No, thank you. What's that? No, thank you. No, thank you? No, thank you. Okay, why are you saying no, thank you? I, I know it's my Fourth Amendment right. I don't have to show you my identification. And one of these books that I want to discuss is this book right here 
It's called Founding Brothers. It's written by Joseph J. Ellis, and I really found this book to be really informative. It helped me out a great deal in understanding uh, the founding of this. Really comfortable too. That's one thing I really like about this bag is the comfort level of it. Um, but anyway, so let me move on here, and we'll start showing the back here, show the features. Uh, first thing first here, we got the front of it. 